the fall of Hitler in his final photos. In mid-January 1945, the Soviet Red Army began its final push towards Berlin. On the evening of January 15th, Adolf Hitler left his Eagle's Nest mountaintop retreat and arrived in the city to make his final stand. Over the next few months, the Russians closed in from all directions. As the cracks of the Third Reich split apart into wide, cavernous fissures, and as his despicable empire collapsed around him, the Fuhrer was photographed on a number of occasions in the last stages of his life. Photo 6 Throughout January, Nazi forces were broken by a near-unstoppable Soviet offensive. In less than three weeks, the Red Army had advanced nearly 500 kilometers, a push that had left the German army close to ruin. Starting from the Vistula and Naru rivers in Belarus, Soviet forces advanced westward as fast as 30 to 40 kilometers a day before coming to a temporary halt. By February 21st, five Russian armies were positioned along the Oder River, some 60 kilometers from the German capital. As the Soviets prepared themselves for a renewed offensive, one of the last photographs of the Fuhrer was taken on February 24th. It depicts a smiley Hitler awarding Konstantin Hurl, the head of the Reich Labor Service, with an exceptional military honor. The Knight's Cross with oak leaves and swords was the second highest grade of the Knight's Cross, which had been introduced in 1939. It paid homage to the original Iron Cross established in 1813, Germany's highest military decoration. It showed that despite the disastrous situation, it was still important for Hitler to keep up appearances. Photo 5 By the beginning of March, the Soviets were undergoing a mopping-up operation in the regions of Pomerania and Silesia. This was in response to a Nazi counterattack on February 20th, which had caught the Red Army by surprise. In one of the most remarkable feats of the entire war, Nazi commander General Guderian had somehow managed to scrape together ten divisions and two corps headquarters from the Eastern Front. With this hodgepodge assembly of men, he had against all the odds driven the Soviets all the way back to Konigsberg. Although the offensive had hardly caused any trouble for the Russians, it did force them to become involved in a time-consuming clear-out of Pomerania and Silesia that would take them most of March. It was in this context that another photograph of Hitler was snapped on March 3rd. It shows Hitler in discussion with his generals at the headquarters of Army Group Vistula, which had been formed on January 23rd to fill gaps in the German defense. By early March, the makeshift battalion had been under the command of Hitler's right-hand man, Heinrich Himmler, who also appears in the photo for just over a month. The appointment had been primarily made out of loyalty, since Himmler had very little military experience. Rather predictably, his amateurish efforts further doomed Germany. Photo 4 By late March, Soviet operations in Pomerania had come to an end. By the 19th, the 2nd German Army and the 3rd Panzer Army had been split up, with the latter force driven back to the lower Oder River. Meanwhile, on the Western Front, the Allies successfully established beachheads on the west bank of the Rhine, further encircling Hitler and his beleaguered armies. In light of these failures, on March 19th, the inexperienced Himmler stepped down and was replaced with General Gotthard Heinrich. The next day, in what would be his final public appearance, Hitler was filmed meeting a group of Hitler youth in the garden of the Reich Chancellery. In the footage, the Nazi despot appears overweight and worn down as he awards 20 members of the Hitler Jugend with the Knight's Cross. As he shakes their hands and gives them their medals with a vacant, wide-opened gaze, Hitler shuffles down the line with a hunched-back posture and discolored skin. He appears to noticeably shake a tremor which has been viewed by some as evidence that towards the end of his life he was suffering with Parkinson's disease. In the days following, his predicament would only worsen as the Red Army, despite German counterattacks, expanded its bridgehead around Kustren, from where the final assault on Berlin would begin. Photos 3 and 2 on March 31st, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin was informed of Allied plans by General Dwight D. Eisenhower, 
But the Russian autocrat was greatly surprised when the Supreme Allied Commander did not mention Berlin at all in his message. Believing that they were concealing their true designs, Stalin concluded that the British and Americans did in fact intend to take it. Presaging their later Cold War rivalry, Stalin next ordered his commanders Georgi Zhukov and Ivan Konev to take the city before the Allies. In doing so, the Soviets did exactly what the Allies wanted. Predicting that intense street-to-street -street fighting would cause horrendous casualties, Eisenhower and his top brass were more than happy for the Russians to take the lead on this most perilous of missions. On April 16th, following one of the heaviest artillery barrages of the war, Soviet troops advanced on the Silo Heights, a horseshoe-shaped plateau which was now the only obstacle separating the Allies from the war-torn streets of Berlin. By April 19th, after heavy fighting, they had broken the German defensive line at the cost of 33,000 casualties and the loss of 743 tanks. Berlin was now wide open for the taking. On April 28th, two days before his suicide, the Nazi commander-in-chief was supposedly photographed for the very last time twice. The first photo shows the Fuhrer inspecting the ruins of the Reichstag Chancellery with his personal aide, Julius Schaub. The second depicts a gesticulating Hitler with Schaub at his side, surrounded by the twisted remains of the Chancellery. On the other hand, it is likely that both snaps were incorrectly dated. According to Dr. Mark Felton, a popular history YouTuber, they were probably taken on March 20th on the same day as Hitler was awarding Knight's Crosses to the Hitler Youth. Photo 1 Aside from this, there exists one last contender for Hitler's last photograph. Allegedly taken on April 4th, 1945, it displays the Fuhrer shaking hands with General Theodor Tolsdorf as he received his Knight's Cross with leaves, swords, and diamonds, the ultimate Nazi Medal of Valor. It has even been speculated that the image was taken in the bunker where Hitler met his end. However, like the two before, there is a problem with the date. According to Dr. Mark Felton, surviving records indicate that no photographer was present in Hitler's secret hideout after March 20th, which crosses out early April. The photo then was probably also snapped on March 20th during Hitler's last public appearance on camera, a little over a month before his death. Whether it was the last though is still hard to say since the specific hour it was taken remains unknown. Photo of Hitler's Body After marrying his longtime mistress Eva Braun and setting out his will on April 30th, Adolf Hitler ended his own life as Soviet troopers scoured the streets of Berlin to find him. With his wife taking poison beside him, history's most evil figure died by ingesting cyanide and shooting himself in the head. In the aftermath, a film shot by the Russians supposedly shows a corpse donning the signature Hitler mustache. On the other hand, most scholars agree that the lifeless body was in fact that of Hitler's cook, Gustav Vela, who sported similar facial hair. In actual fact, Hitler and Braun's bodies were hurriedly cremated in the Chancery Garden. The Nazi leader's teeth were all that remained of him. In 2017, the Russians permitted French scientists to examine the long-dead dictator's teeth, which had remained in Russian possession for over 70 years. By comparing them to dental x-rays taken in 1944 and descriptions written by his personal dentist, the team confirmed that they were the same set. In the process, they also disproved many conspiracy theories that argued that Hitler had actually survived and managed to escape to South America. As a result, this last photo can be entirely discounted. Viewed in the correct order, the six authentic photos play like a sort of degenerative slideshow, depicting the sorry decline of a man whose world was crumbling around him. Through another lens, they show how unrelenting the Allies' end war campaign was, and how much of a toll it had on Hitler's mental and physical health, as the defeated Nazi kingpin hunkered down in Berlin to await his fate.